listening to the Becoming Who You Are podcast, your guide to authentic living. Visit becomingwhoyouare.net for more resources, tools, and suggestions designed to help you create the life you want from the inside out. Now here's your host, Hannah. Hello, and welcome to the Becoming Who You Are podcast. My name is Hannah, and thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Today, I want to talk about six free tools that you can use to kickstart your authentic living. Personal development takes a lot of time, but it doesn't have to be financially costly. Therapy, seminars, and group work can all be really helpful if you want to include them in your process, but you can also do plenty of helpful things for free as well. Not everyone has the flexibility or the resources to engage in things like therapy or attend courses or seminars or whatever. And that's absolutely fine because there are many, many things that you can do in your own time, on your own terms, for free that are still really, really useful. The first tool that I want to talk about is journaling. Journaling is something that I've written about a lot over at the Becoming Who You Are website. I've even written a book about it called The Ultimate Guide to Journaling, which outlines everything you need to know to start and maintain a regular and rewarding journaling practice. And it also has over a 100 different prompts, suggestions and ideas that you can use to deepen your journaling practice as well. In addition to that, I have a separate podcast also called The Ultimate Guide to Journaling, which takes you through that a similar process. You'll be able to find a link to that podcast as well as all the other resources I talk about in this episode in the show notes. So journaling is something that I love, 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 and it's something that I use a huge amount in my own life too. The great thing about journaling is that it can take many forms. Writing by hand can be more personal than typing, but you can also use word processing software or online services like 750 Words or Pensy. And again, I'll link to these in the show notes. Journaling can include, but isn't by any means limited to, stream of consciousness writing, recording dreams, uh, journaling about a specific topic or person, or completing written exercises from a workbook. And that's not even to mention art journaling, which is a whole different subject and has a multitude of possibilities all on its own. The type and content of journaling is a really personal preference. What's really important is to try and journal regularly so that you devote time every day, every few days or every week to yourself. Sometimes regular journaling might feel like a chore, but exploring this feeling in itself is a really helpful process. It's fascinating to look back at what you have recorded several months later And as well as revealing patterns in your thoughts or feelings, doing this can also show you how far you've come since then as well. The second tool I want to talk about is podcasts. Podcasts on personal development like this one, meditation, psychology and relationships are readily available through the iTunes store and websites like Podomatic. iTunes U, which is slightly separate from the podcast branch of the iTunes store and focuses specifically on university-produced content, also gives you access to university lectures on these topics, all for free. Listening to podcasts doesn't involve activity in the same way that channeling does, but the right podcasts are still thought-provoking and open you up to new ideas. Next on the list is websites and blogs. Whether you find it helpful to explore information-based websites or read about other people's personal experiences with self-work through their blogs, online content is a great resource for inspiration. As well as traditional written content in the form of blogs, websites like YouTube host an ever-expanding number of videos on relevant topics. One website that I've actually totally fallen in love with recently, which I wasn't really expecting to, is Pinterest. Um, Pinterest isn't usually the first thing that would come to mind when you think of a personal development website, but actually there are so many people on there posting all these inspiring pictures and quotes and linking to all these really great articles as well. I really enjoyed exploring it and discovering all these new websites and people to follow and also curating my own content and creating vision boards around certain topics. The fourth tool on this list that I want to talk about is books. Now, when I say that, you might be thinking, books aren't free, you have to pay for them, which is a very valid point. 
However, if you're in striking distance of a local library, then check out their selection um, on psychology and self-help. I gotta say that I really wasn't expecting to get much from my local library, but actually there are a couple of books there that I had never even heard of before that I took out and read and really loved. So I would definitely recommend doing that. If you still can't find the book you're looking for at your local library, you can get almost free copies from places like Amazon Secondhand Marketplace where people sell off secondhand books for really cheap. And in the UK, certainly you can get books for like one penny plus there. Obviously you have to pay postage and packing, but it's still a really, really good bargain compared to the new price. There's also other places like eBay and ABE Books as well, which are great, great places to find secondhand, readable, but really good value books. The next tool is meditation. Like journaling, meditation is another way of devoting time to yourself each day or each week. It can help develop mindfulness, our sense of presence, and our awareness of what's happening in the here and now. Regular meditation also provides a gateway for new thoughts to come through, thoughts that usually might be crowded out by everyday life. Most of all, meditation is a great way to clear your mind of baggage and clutter, and this is particularly helpful if you want to focus on specific themes or patterns. The last tool I want to talk about is social media. Now, this might seem like a really weird thing to include on a list of tools to kickstart your authentic living, especially because social media is such a great distraction from our personal development and from being mindful and being in the here and now. At the same time, personal development can be a lonely process. Sometimes thoughts or feelings come up that can challenge you or people around you. The internet is a great way to meet others who are on a similar journey, and online communities can be a real source of inspiration, reassurance, and support. Of course, the internet does come with its own risks, so if you decide to use this tool, please take care with your boundaries, and also take basic precautions like using a pseudonym and not giving personal details like name and address online. I'm sure you're all incredibly sensible people and you know that already, but it is definitely worth saying just so you can make the most of online support that you can get and stay safe at the same time. So that's it for the six free tools that you can use to kickstart your authentic living. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have any ideas, for any other tools that people can use, especially people on a budget, please send me an email at hannah, that's H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net and let me know. Thanks so much for listening today and I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. You can get in touch with Hannah by emailing H-A-N-N-A-H at becomingwhoyouare.net. Don't forget to visit becomingwhoyouare.net and find out how you can use rational personal development to live an authentic life.